Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined, as always, by my wonderful co hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. But much more importantly, today we are joined by Mr. Stephen Nowolski, uh, CEO, and Patrick O'Sullivan, Chief Bitcoin Officer, CBO of Aussie baseball team Perth Heat. Uh, how are both you guys doing today? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, thanks for having us on. Uh, really excited for the chat. Yeah, let's go. Nice. Okay, let's do it. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, anyone who uh, has any idea who you guys are or who Perth Heat are uh, will know that there's a lot of firsts going on here. So you're the first sports team to uh, run on a Bitcoin standard uh, and uh, believe the first organization to have a chief Bitcoin officer, a CBO, uh, as far as I'm aware, and probably as far as you guys are aware, unless that's changed. Um, so I guess if you guys could give us a sort of a basic idea of what the organization being on a Bitcoin standard actually consists of, um, that would be appreciated for anyone kind of listening in who has no idea what's going on. Um, and then I guess just tell us what inspired this idea in the first place. Yeah, cool. Maybe I'll start off with what we're doing at the moment, then Patrick can go into yeah you know, what inspires us. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll put an asterisk or a, a, a marker down early to say that, uh, you know, for me, uh, our chief Bitcoin officer, um, who is the first of its type in, in, in the world, is the uh, is the architect of this. Uh, you know, Patrick uh, Patrick's work with with, with our organisation has just been phenomenal. Um, and, and and also, you know, with myself, um, you know, we, we look at CIS uh, suite structures, you know, in organisations, and you know, generally uh, it's the CEO up here, uh, and really the CBO is not on that uh, page until we've introduced it. Um, down, down, down the line into the future, that's going to change. And I think you know, the CBO is going to stand above the CEO. Um, you know, that's how quickly this, this is going to uh, you know, change the way uh, boardrooms and executive uh, management teams will look um, you know, into, into the future. So, you know, what do we do? We're pretty much everything. Uh, and if we're not doing something, we'd, we'd like to know, you know from the Bitcoin community uh, as, as to how we can implement Bitcoin into our, into our everyday uh, organization. So payments now, uh, Bitcoin is the standard. We've you know, completely reversed what's happened in world sport with players going uh, to the management and asking to be paid in Bitcoin. Uh, us as an organization now, the Perth are saying Bitcoin is the default payment and then we'll work backwards from there. So that goes across the board with uh, players, staff, um, you know, additional um, mem members of, uh, of management throughout, throughout the team. Uh, yeah, we accept uh, Bitcoin payments throughout the ballpark already. Uh, we started that uh, late last year. So you can come to the ballpark, you can buy a hot dog, you can buy a beer, you can buy uh, merchandise, you can buy tickets, you know, with Bitcoin, uh, which, which is fantastic. Um, you know, obviously, in terms of you know, payments uh, internationally, we're, you know, accepting Bitcoin is so much easier than uh, going through a SWIFT code and you know, the, the Fiat legacy system, which is just an absolute nightmare. Um, so, you know, taking payments in Bitcoin, um, you know, cross borders, uh, what we'll do in terms of integrating with the Lightning Network um, within our season uh, will be revolutionary. And you, you'll see some announcements uh, with that in the coming, uh, probably in the coming week, which will be pretty exciting as to how we'll increase and improve the fan experience globally, uh, because this is no longer a story about just taking Bitcoin payments and saying, oh, fantastic. Uh, there's, there's so many more layers to uh, what we'll do and how we'll excite fans um, around the world and you know, in, in, interact with your cell phone and um, you know, the Lightning Network, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just awesome to see how quickly the advancements in technologies and tools are changing. Um, it's almost weekly um, and, and trying to keep up with them in some ways is, is a challenge. Um, so, yeah, I th think Bitcoin, uh, think Perth, Perth Eat, and uh, I think we've said on a couple of... Uh, different chats we've had and the big announcement which will be when we launch our uh, Bitcoin mining at the ballpark in the coming months prior to uh, the season starting in October. Um, we'll, we'll show the world what is possible by mining you know, Bitcoin at a sports venue and how that can benefit the community. Um, that's really exciting. Um, you know, we've had support from the government here in Western Australia. Uh, we'll have some solar uh, up at the, uh, the ballpark which will power the uh, the Bitcoin mining, and yeah, this this will be a great test case for the world to show, um, yeah, the power of Bitcoin mining, um, an education on Bitcoin mining, and how the community benefits from it as well. So, uh, yeah, really excited to to bring that project together. It's uh, there's been a lot of work involved with it, but uh, yeah, the benefits of it will be just 
phenomenal for the network. It's uh, it's going to be pretty cool. I guess a quick question, like when, when you guys uh, accept Bitcoin inside of the stadium, um, is that like uh, Lightning as well as uh, on-chain or is it just on-chain or just is it both? No, it's on the Lightning network. So, um, and, and then it's, it's pretty cool to see the people that you're introducing to it that, or even if they're standing in line, and you know the person in front of them make, making that bitcoin payment and them understanding how it works and how simple it is yeah and that's you know a great, great part of the whole education and bringing everything into a sports venue is is how quickly you can see people adapting and understanding to uh what bitcoin is about and you know all these things i've heard and you know seeing it come into practice in a lot of ways because you can walk down you know the, the main mall in uh, the city of Perth and ask someone about Bitcoin. I go, oh, sorry, Mark, I don't have you know twenty thousand US to buy a coin. I, 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 I can't do it. You scratch your head, yeah. But then when you see them, uh, you know, similar sorts of people in line, understand that they can make a payment there, and you need you know, you know five to ten dollars, wherever it may be. It starts the education in a very very simple uh, manner, which is great. We don't have to overcomplicate it sometimes, which I think we get uh, according to that trap, yeah, you know, of, of talking about Bitcoin. Yeah, at a level which sometimes just doesn't uh, um, resonate with the non-Bitcoiner. Um, and just by having something as simple as uh, lightning payments in the ballpark and people understanding they can purchase immediately um, you know, or, or their, their transaction will be final um, there and then uh, is, is, is pretty cool. Um, for, the, for the mining operation that you guys are going to launch at the stadium, um, how many miners are we talking about? Is this going to be like a huge mining operation or, or just a few uh, Bitcoin miners? Oh, no, we've got Chad at, uh, at Riot covered. We're going to have a data center bigger than the one at Winston. It's not just joking. Uh, we'll just be a couple. Uh, yeah, look, it's, 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 it's not about um, you know, creating the biggest yeah, data center in, in the Southern Hemisphere or anything like that. It's, it's an education. It's, it's to, if you... Jump, jump on the you know, you, you, uh, your, your computer and type in Bitcoin mining air, and you'll see these images of these huge data centers, and you'll go, "Shit, Jesus Christ, that looks scary." And and suddenly people will, you know, link it to the uh, the publicity about the Bitcoin mining is bad for the community, and I'll just look at the picture and go, "Yeah, that that shit looks bad." Um, if we can enable the average uh, baseball fan to come in, touch, feel, look, see, and understand it. There's the education right there and then. Oh, okay. Is that is, is that is that what Bitcoin mining is? Right, it's just a computer plugged into a bit of power. Right, okay. That's how how it all comes together in terms of the algorithms. Got it. Understood. So much easier. Yeah. Um, we're not yeah looking to create a, a, a data center that's going to yeah um, take take on the world or anything like that. It's, it comes back to simple education. Yeah. Using solar power is going to be a, a good idea for sure, right? Like it obviously helps use energy that you're getting for free essentially to, to mine the Bitcoin. And also it kind of, again, shows people there's a green side to the Bitcoin side of things as well. Um, yeah, but, yeah, spot on. And look, it, 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 is it going to be the perfect setup? No, far from it. But what it is, it's, it is the first project effectively where we've got government support in terms of what we're doing. And this is saying to the world, here is a government in Western Australia um, with a sports team in effectively a private setting, uh, or sorry, a, a public setting, and they're mining Bitcoin. And no, there's, no, there's nothing harmful about this. They're working off a couple of uh, solar panels. It's returning some uh, revenue back to the community. And anything that the Bitcoin mining generates will go back into the community and we'll have a presentation there with a the junior baseball team and presenting with bats or balls or uh, whatever it may be that that community club requires. Um, and here it is, it's as a pilot project saying to the world, this is what's possible. How many sports venues are there in the world? Gosh, you know, like, you, I don't, how, how long will that take to, uh, to, to calculate? Yeah, but there's so many opportunities of how Bitcoin, you know, can be, uh, can be injected into these, uh, in, in, into these arenas um, as a benefit for the local community. And yeah, we're happy to say, we're going to start the project. Is it going to be perfect on November 1? No, but is it going to be a really, really good test case and pilot project as to how can we improve it and how others can uh, follow? Absolutely. And that's what's most exciting is that we're going to open the eyes to the world as to the, uh, the possibilities of Bitcoin mining at sports venues. 
I know one thing. So I'm a fan of uh, Forest Green here in the UK. That's a football mm. team. They're known as like the greenest team in the in the world, uh, and they've used like solar power for the stadium. And I, when I go, there's like you know, there's all sorts of different things like bamboo sport kits and things. Uh, and that has brought them uh, a lot of fans, like internationally. So when if you go, you see people coming from mm. France and all sorts of countries because of that aspect of them being green. Right? They 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 were. I think actually got promoted but yeah they were like a league two team league one now um so that was kind of the main reason have you guys seen with you guys becoming the bitcoin team and obviously having everything that goes on around that and the publicity around that um has, have you seen that increase um like membership numbers and interest in the team at all or, or has it been like, has it made much of an impact yet so far or, or is that something to, still to come that's been crazy yeah it's been great uh globally what we did um, in four months of merchandise sales, uh, post the announcement in November is the equivalent of three years of international sales online. Um, you know, with the Bitcoin conference in Miami and the, you know, the jerseys were selling out like hotcakes. It was pretty awesome walking around uh, the convention center and seeing our jersey on, you know, Bitcoiners, you know, over the course of the three days or walking throughout the streets of Miami and seeing it, yeah, um, pop up or people wearing our hats. So now the, the interest in the team has, has, been, uh, has been overwhelming. It's been beautiful. Um, but in a lot of ways, our, our journey in terms of what we're going to uh, roll out hasn't started. And that's what's really exciting in the way that we can influence the community um, and onboard masses uh, by what we do at the ballpark, by being community leaders um, on the education of Bitcoin and its benefits uh, and the benefits of operating on a Bitcoin standard. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in um, the idea for this because I remember reading the Bitcoin magazine article um and basically it kind of, you know, it was like the, the, the idea occurred and, and you're already into Bitcoin and Patrick was into Bitcoin. And then it was kind of like a discussion with the board, which I want to ask you about as well. But for, for now, I guess, like you hear about the different stories about, I don't know, Mr. Olympia competition. And it was because of like Olympia beers, what they were drinking when they were having a chat, whatever. Are there any kind of interesting stories around how that happened? Or is it more of like a gradual thing where you're like, actually, we should just do this. And then it kind of, you know, cascades. Like how, what's the story behind the actual idea? And is there anything interesting going on there? Uh, I, I would say the interesting part is exactly how you laid it out. I mean, it, it was fairly straightforward and simple in a, a conversation, which should give hope to a lot of Bitcoiners out there who are interested in, you know, just having conversations about Bitcoin, right? It happens, it enters your life, uh, it starts to change the way that you think and the way that you act, and you feel that... Uh, you know, pretty much everything you do, as soon as you get into it and you get get started down the rabbit hole, you start having these conversations. And one little conversation uh, that I had with Steve completely changed the course of, uh, well, the, 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 the network, at least on our end, and our lives from that conversation. This ability to really, I guess Steve was really quick to understand that, uh, see some of the key things with Bitcoin and understand some of the problems uh, that it was solving uh, and what the technology was meant to do. And um, through conversations like that, it's, it's not hard really to put it together. Once you see that Bitcoin is beneficial at an individual level, it's not really hard to piece it together that um, it can be beneficial for a group, right? A group is just a uh, selection of individuals who are pointed at, at a common goal. Um, and, you know, through the course of uh, a number of months and just having more and more conversations, realize that this is uh, probably an ideal space an ideal opportunity, an organization, just the way that it is structured, the way that the league is structured here in Australia, the way that the team um, has ownership of, of over all of the media, all of the rights, all of those things. There's a lot more freedom here um, with just how things are set up that we could actually make a go at it. Uh, and then just months and months of sort of trying to figure out, okay, why, you know, we're not rocket scientists. Why hasn't anybody done this before? <laughs> uh, what, what, what pitfalls are there? And then sort of, you know, even to a point of maybe perhaps to our own detriment, overthinking it a little bit of being like, okay, well, if no one has done this before, surely there's limitations that we're not thinking of. Surely there's steps that we haven't uh, considered that other smart people have. Um, and as it turns out, uh, at least up until this point, the, the, that just hasn't been the case. Um, and, you know, we, we went through the process of orange pilling the board and bringing those uh, members along with us and really showing the benefits of what Bitcoin um, can do for the organization. And those, you know, that's a completely different topic. It's a long conversation um, and it's not easy. And I'm sort of fast forwarding over months of these things, but it all starts from a simple conversation of this is how I think Bitcoin can help. And this is how uh, some of the problems that you are seeing in the world that maybe you can't put your finger on, um, how those can be drawn back to, uh, to things that Bitcoin solves. So really, it's just a, it's a simple conversation that morphs into um, how can I help? You know, I don't have... I don't have technical skills. I'm not going to code the thing that's going to change the world. Um, but I do have the ability to explain in a fairly consistent and uh, reliable manner exactly why this is going to revolutionize the world. What's the response been from like, like the players and the staff and all that that have been receiving their salary? And um, how has the league responded? 
Um, are there other teams in the league that have maybe kind of copied or followed your guys' lead and done something similar? Or are you guys pretty much pioneering this? I think it's fair to say we're, we're pioneering this, but uh, while, while, while we're pioneering, the Australian Baseball League and their management team are, are watching closely. So um, a, a few weeks ago, the head of their marketing department sat in on one of our meetings, which was which was awesome. Um, and you know, I wanted to learn and understand how potentially they could maybe you know, imp implement something in, in one of the rounds this season. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're certainly, um, I think, sitting back and watching with, with great interest as to how this plays out um, for our organisation, which is great. Um, they certainly haven't uh, put any roadblocks um, in front of us, uh, which shows that they're a progressive um, organisation. Um, I, th I think if you can, uh, you look at the major leagues in the world and uh, maybe if we re reference you know, the Premier League you know, for football, uh, the NFL, American football, uh, MLB, uh, you know, there's a lot of red tape there. Um, we, we, this is one of the great benefits we've got is that we don't have the red tape of these big organ uh, these big sports leagues, these um, you know, teams that uh, may need the, uh, all 32 owners to, to buy into an idea or in, in, into a process to agree to, to, to allow it. So um, we haven't had any red tape from the Australian Baseball League. They've been supportive. Our players have been fantastic. Um, you know, really, we couldn't speak highly enough of their, uh, their reaction uh, to this announcement. Um, but it shouldn't be surprising either. I think we've got a really, really intelligent uh, you know, group of athletes. Um, athletes understand uh, low time preference, um, but they also understand um, you know, the opportunity in front of us from with, with our organisation. Um, and you know, they've just wanted to continue to learn. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the reaction we've had from our players. Um, you know, since the announcement and you know, I, I guess everyone throughout the organization in how, the, how they've embraced it. So it's, it's been, um, it's been yeah, re really touching in some ways because uh, as Patrick said, sometimes you, in, in the process of launching, you overthink it and uh, maybe you think of you know, reasons why uh, this may not be possible. But uh, you know, since we've launched, it's just been awesome to see the reaction from, uh, from everyone within the organization. You know, we tend to think of Bitcoin and all the, you know, um, positives and pros that it can bring. And, but as a business, I assume, you know, having listened to everything you've explained and narrated, I, as a business, I assume that you hold some Bitcoin in your balance sheet. How do you as a business get to deal with the volatility? You know, I assume that not all, your, all of your business associates will, you know, obviously take payments in Bitcoin, but you know, how do you deal, do you keep some of them despite we're in a Bitcoin peer market, we might be, it might, you know, stay for a very long time. So how do you deal with the volatility and, you know, all of that? Uh, yeah, I would say just so I guess it's clear, uh, if it wasn't made clear earlier, that when we talk about operating on a Bitcoin standard, it is everything uh, that you could possibly think of uh, with Bitcoin, right? That was one of the things when we originally started this project was like, we're not going to go, it's not going to be just another announcement of payments, it's not going to be just another announcement of uh, keep a, a little bit on the corporate uh, balance sheet. Uh, it's going to be all in on Bitcoin. That's it. All the chips on the table pushed into Bitcoin because that is what we wanted to see. Right? We've been waiting for a long time, at least if you've been a Bitcoin or for a long time, you've been waiting. I have personally been waiting for a company to just say, fuck it, let's go. We're going all in. We're not messing around. We're not, uh, you know, going to uh, dip a toe in. It's going to be everything Bitcoin. So when you say, yeah, do, do we hold Bitcoin on the balance sheet? Yes. Uh, the entire balance sheet um, that, that is not barred in, in fiat is in Bitcoin, right? That The, the strategy is long term. We know uh, through, you know, just the the conviction that has been built up um, in the game theory and Bitcoin and what it can do. And uh, we know that in the long term, this puts us in a better position to be successful as a baseball uh, team, as an organization. So it is all in on Bitcoin. Uh, is there volatility? Yes. Do you have to plan for this stuff? Uh, absolutely. Um, is that going to be the case forever? No. Um, so yes, there are those things. And that, that comes through, I guess that speaks to the education within the organization, right? You can't just spring this on the organization and say, Hey, uh, everybody, we should, uh, we should just change everything to Bitcoin, um, at $60,000 and then just go, Oh, it didn't work. You know, we, everybody just lost 80% of their money. The, the corporation is going to go completely bunk. It's all fucked. Like that would obviously not be great. Um, which is why it took so long to make sure that there was conviction behind the board and that they understood that this is, these are the reasons why it's going to be successful. These are the pitfalls. Um, and as long as you're honest and upfront 
I think as soon as people get the idea, which, you know, it, it may take, it's a complex system, right? The, the meme going around right now, Bitcoin Twitter, is that it's 100 hours to even scratch the surface of understanding just how the network works, how it operates, how it functions. Um, once you get past those 100 hours, you've only just begun. Um, so it really is about getting that education, finding the right places to do that and the right content to do that for the audience that you are talking to. But as soon as we were able to get the key contributors on board, the key uh, stakeholders and decision makers, this really was... I guess it's a test case, right? Like we didn't know that it was going to drop that much. We, we, we anticipated that the volatility would be there as it has been in the past, right? There's lots of misconceptions about what Bitcoin is. And that's one of the beautiful parts about an 80% drop. It's a beautiful part about the Bitcoin community in general. It's like uh, you come up with an assumption for your position um, and you come up with conviction for that position. And then a bear market will completely wipe it out. You know, the money printer go burr. Uh, narrative around Bitcoin and why it has gone up and it's going to be an inflation uh, hedge, uh, that goes completely down the toilet, right? Well, you have to ask yourself, well, why? What happened? Why was I wrong? If you're objective about things, what changes in the narrative? And the beautiful part about a bear market is it allows Bitcoiners to do that and to step back and go, okay, what, what were we missing? What didn't we see? And every time that happens, that Bitcoin doesn't die, the narrative sharpens, right? The arguments get better. The stories that you can bring on new people with get only more informed. So that's exactly what's going to happen in this. The, the narrative is going to get better. It's going to get stronger and eventually we'll bounce back even better than we were before. And we're positioned in a spot because we have put our hand up to say we're ready to really hold up a mirror to the Bitcoin network and say, this is the best that Bitcoin has to offer. These are the things that we can do and, and these are the benefits that the Bitcoin network can offer an organization. Um, and by putting our hand up, we're saying, uh, if you have ideas, come to us. If you have suggestions, come to us. The talent in the Bitcoin space is, uh, as you guys know, is, is pretty wild. It's, uh, you know, some of the top thinkers um, in the world are working on this because of the incentives, because of the opportunity that is here. And because it's open source, we can tap into that. Um, and that makes a huge difference in how we run the business. Okay.